it's time. There we go. Perfect. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, another week. No Stoy. He's still living it up in Hawaii. Uh, living his best life out there. I don't know if he'll ever come back. He could back. probably at least drink a beer, unlike me. But, hey, we're just jealous. Exactly. That's true. We're very jealous. Uh, he did send in his picks again, though, this week. So, just like last week, we'll uh, we'll announce those once we get to that. Uh, this week, first, first time both tours played. Uh, there was some good things, some bad things, some criticisms and whatnot, but that's always going to happen. Uh, so today we'll, we'll do kind of our same, same thing. We'll break down the RBC Canadian. Uh, Cole has to, uh, come out and formally apologize. I think I, I do. He uh, does. So will, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, so we'll go through the RBC Canadian. We'll go through our news that we have, uh, probably go a little bit more in depth with the live tour this week. Cause, we got some players in from the Live Tour playing in the Open this week, uh, and then we'll go to the U.S. Open, give that course breakdown, give that whole breakdown there, and uh, then we'll make our picks. Absolutely, big. I mean, big month overall, but like big weeks. Not like last week, this week, coming weeks for golf. Um, you know, even sometimes negative or bad press is good press, and I think uh, the Live Tours is that right now. Um, we'll see if it stays that way, but uh, right now, a lot of eyeballs nationally uh, on the game of golf. So yeah, I think I think you said bad press, and I think bad press is really through live, basically through the media mm-hmm. and through different stuff like that. But fan base wise, a lot of fans were excited for it, liked it. I mean, yeah. I'll I'll never turn down the opportunity to see the, some of the top players in the world play in different right. formats and competingly like I think it's fun to create a little bit of competition there. Yep. Um but I mean, I don't know. There's some a lot of, of our curiosity predictions out some there of our still. predictions almost happened. Right. So no, lots to talk about, lots to cover. Big week this week with obviously again another major on board, but uh a lot of different golf events and uh a little bit that I'll touch on in the news to uh some different format golf events that you might not have heard of uh that were also uh interesting or intriguing at least to me. So Absolutely. So let's go back in. Uh, we'll let you start. I'll start. I'll start. Uh, so I would like to sincerely apologize um, to the RBC Canadian Open. Uh, last week's show, we had the live tour. Obviously, a lot of excitement there, a lot of intrigue. Um, but the RBC has moved around. It's not a one venue event. Not a, you know more of a warm up for the U.S. Open. Um, Field matters, who, who's in the running matters, but we undersold it. And I specifically feel like I undersold it, um, <laughs> especially watching Sunday, because that was as good as event as, you know, a waste management open style of event from crowd interaction to the high level of play and high level of players. And obviously we had an elite group, um, finishing group of Finau, Thomas, and McElroy on Sunday, so it doesn't get any better than that. But the crowd was engaged all four rounds. Um, they have the stadium holes similar to uh, the waste management, and the event lived up to, or way above, actually, I would, would say expectations. Now, so hats off to the Canadians. Yeah, I mean, is, you, is saw, you saw them, like, pounded on the banners right, and everything like, like that I mean, all over part threes. Rowdy. Screaming, getting, all, like, everything or mm-hmm. F live to or all this right. stuff. Like, they're they're going all in. And mm-hmm. I thought I thought it was funny to see that. But one thing you did mention, and probably it was one of the best things that could have happened for the PGA Tour while live tour was going on was we had an elite final group. Mm-hmm. Thomas Finau and McElroy. Like, but the, then you had the atmosphere to match it. Exactly. Which does, I mean, RBC Canadian Open. You could have told me that was the final group. That I think that's why I felt like I needed to apologize, is because I think you could have told me last week that that was the final group, and I still would have told you that Live would have been probably like as interesting. And honestly, watching Sunday compared to anything that I watched on the Live, PGA still blew it out of the water. Yeah, I think. I think the live is going to learn 
from some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. I did like hearing some of like the caddy talk and the right. interactions and stuff like that. We've we've talked about that in the past. Mm-hmm. You know, hearing Spieth and hearing JT uh, and those guys talk with their caddies. It's just it's fun to hear that breakdown. Um, right. But I think there's just still some questions that are unanswered with the live tour that we again we can yeah, get we, into. Let's later dive on. into that here. Um, after, uh, after but we let's do our let's recap. dive into our picks. I mean, honestly, overall, a pretty darn good week. Uh, I didn't actually realize that CT Pan must have withdrawn or didn't play. Hmm. Uh, I didn't know, so we'll start right in the middle of the Black Stallion because <laughs> Black Stallion for this week that was a pretty pretty yeah, solid, solid picks. I mean, you got you got Aaron Ray at uh, plus eleven thousand and Brendan Todd at plus five thousand. Both of them finished thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Type of thirteenth. I had CT Pan. I don't know what happened. I, yeah. I, I didn't do too much withdrew, research, but yeah, withdrew whatever. Uh, but he didn't play. So, but honestly, Blackstone, that's pretty darn good. Uh, jump up to our one and duns. One and duns. We had a pretty good week. Yeah. I mean, we were scoring. We got some points there. Uh, well, you jumped into the top 30 this week. With I, a win. I did. I jumped into the top 30 with a win. Rory, Rory pulled through for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that that course really fit him. And you, you mentioned it like right. the, the weather, the, just the style of course, He's long when he needs to be, but he's also precise when he needs to be too. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just fit him. Uh, Stoy took Matt Fitzpatrick, who we've been high on a lot this year, and we'll uh, we'll touch base on him too because we yep. heard some pretty crazy stats last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, he finished top ten, uh, and Cole took Todd, uh, his black stallion. He took him one and done as well. Got thirteenth there. I mean, can't complain. Yeah. Can't complain. Who who'd you have originally? They withdrew. Oh, oh, P. Reed. Okay, yeah. Which who? And announced that he's he's, yeah, he's he, uh, he changing went his alliance. To go to the lid. Yes, yes. Maybe CT Pan's going with him. and they just didn't pay him exactly, you know, you exactly. Uh, outright winners. Um, I don't know why I didn't double up, but I didn't. Uh, but Stoy took Corey Connors. Yeah, ended up finishing sixth. Mm-hmm. Good pick there. Uh, Cole took Rory, Absolutely. who won that sucker. Yes, sir. And then I took Cam Smith. Ended up forty eighth. So for that, uh, that's my first shitty shot. Um, not really a shitty shot this week. We're going Patron. We're running out of our shitty shots, so we need to uh, restock. But to keep going through, as I as I pour, we can jump into top 40 here. Uh, Chris got her up was Stoy's pick. He missed the cut here. I think he only missed it by one or two strokes. Yeah, he was uh, close. Hoshgard, he was close as well, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he was two strokes off. But that's that's a that's a thing that we can, you know, harp on is Connors was one stroke inside of the cut line and ended up right. sixth. Yeah. So it's a very fun it's, line. Exactly. I think that's happened quite a bit where we've had both sides of the fence. They've missed a cut by a stroke or two, or they've made the cut by a stroke or two. Mm-hmm. Both had very very drastic changes. Well, and know. this was very different setup, and I say that because usually the course. Saturday is moving day, and then Sunday they'll set it up pretty tough. Um, the course was set up almost opposite of normal, whereas Thursday, Friday were by far the toughest course conditions. Yeah. And then you got a whole bunch of thoroughbreds that went out and scored on Saturday and Sunday. I mean, numbers being put up right and left. Yeah. All we- I mean, all weekend. If you weren't in the low 60s, you didn't have a chance to – to catch up. I mean, Justin Rose shot 60 and had a chance at 58 on Sunday and still finished like five shots off, six, six shots off. And that's shooting a 10 under par. So, um, but there was a lot of scoring opportunities on the weekend. And that's what, again, what made the event fun as well. So absolutely. And we'll finish up with our worst overall grouping player to fade that we have had uh, Stoy and Cole. Both took Sam Burns. Uh, didn't think he could go back to back in his two events. He didn't end up going back to back. Yeah, he played well though. But he ended up fourth. Yeah, <laughs> he. he Sam and he Burns. was in it all week. I mean, he played well all week. It wasn't a lightning in a bottle, one round type of thing. So Sam Burns and Scotty Scheffler are like right now because Scotty's been kind of unpredictable lately. Mm-hmm. But Sam Burns has just been steady Eddie. Just nails uh, and. He's looking like, okay, I'm a top five, top three, top two, top top yep. golfer in the world right mm-hmm. now. Sam Burns is playing some freaking golf. Yep. 
Uh, and then I took Connors, uh, faded him, and he ended up finishing sixth. So Stoy taking Connors um, and me taking Connors and my player to fade, there's another shitty shot for Ryan. Womp womp. Yeah, I, I gave you the championship this week, so we all got zero points in that, which is terrible. Yeah. I gave you the championship this week because of our side bet. Mm-hmm. So that's what I went with. Um, which, do we only have the one side? We only had the one side bet this okay. week. That was uh, just the score. And it was 11 and a half, which... We didn't feel like it was bad, but I wasn't expecting... I mean, that goes back to my previous point of they set the course up to score on the weekend way more than what it was set up to score on Thursday, Friday. Yeah, and I mean, realistically, there were six golfers that finished better than that out of, you know, the 65 True. that... So it's not a bad number by any means, but yeah, it but got if annihilated. That, if they set that golf course up four days like they did Thursday, Friday, a, a 10 or 11 under, you're only getting one or two guys that might get to that number. I, I agree there. So, what what I'm saying is I don't think it was a bad number. I just think it was no. course well, was set up different. Well, I don't think that as, the, as we set it up, obviously, even if we would have set it at 13, 14, like you're still not getting to the number we got to. So it was going to hit the over no matter what. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, all right, well, here's another one. <clears throat> Woof. I have to move closer to you in case you fall off that chair. You know, my mom would be pumped up right now. Yeah, I know. Mama Gary loves Patron. We've mentioned it a long time ago on the podcast. Yeah. I think when we were talking football, it was one of my first probably three or four shows. I think. I think you were drinking. I think you were drinking tequila. Yeah, I I then taken a shot for her or to yeah. her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mama Carrie, she lo- she loves herself some Patron. Mama Carrie's birthday this weekend. Ooh, it's Thursday. Uh, my brother actually, his baby was doing the second, mm-hmm. and sucker stubborn. Mm-hmm. And think that it might be, okay. you know, a birthday birthday buddy thing. My brother doesn't yeah. want that solely for the fact that he wants his kid to have his own day type Wait, deal. It was due on the second, yeah. And they still haven't made it. No, nope. that's not two very weeks. They give two weeks. Some two weeks. Some only give a week these days. That's why yeah. I was wondering. Gave him two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, but they just had they just had ultrasounds, and everything like that. Everything Baby's, doing okay. Baby's doing great. Baby's doing great. Mom's doing great. Took him up, uh, man. Exactly. Exactly. Well, just, uh, that's a birthday shot then. Yeah, for Mama birthday Carrie. shot for Mama Carrie. Birthday shot for for uh, little baby H. There Willow's go. gonna bully little baby H. <laughs> she she already told me. She already told you. Yeah, it was, it was a bad conversation. I tried to that's all right. tried to said, "Hey, Willow, just, calm down. We gotta we gotta let him catch she up." She get to that you. from her dad or what? Like what? What's going on there? No, she's just you know she's just. She does a little bit of the stubbornness, but she's just going to be tougher than nails, and I don't think that she has a choice about that. That's fair. She gets called a boy all the time, so. Well. I mean, she's just got to be tough, I that's think. That's right. That's fair. I don't know why. I don't know how, though. Like, you, we could dress her in pink and, yeah. like, a bow. And it's and like, she's oh, got a how ton old is of he? hair. How old is he? I'm like, right. well. She's got more hair got than bow most on. guys that I know already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, that's. Got more hair than Grandpa Bob. Yeah. Right. No doubt about that. <laughs> No. All right. Well, cheers, Mama Carrie. Happy birthday. She would be proud, though, because uh, no training wheels. She says uh, limes and salt are training wheels. Yeah. So, I mean, she I would obviously think that, like, any type of pineapple backer would be a... Yeah, it'd be a no-go. That'd be like a taxi cab, then, not even training wheels, huh? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. I mean... I don't know. I think she's like okay with like pickle juice after whiskey, right. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What, what is that? Tennessee hooker? Some. Uh, well, I think that's I, what they call it. All right. I think that's what they I call it. I can't say that I know. I mean, I'm not going to act like I know one way or the other. I think that's what they call them. All right. So I think that's what it is. But she's all right with pickle juice and stuff like that, but probably not after. She's just like, you can't ruin a good tequila by doing that to it. Well, that's fair. And Patron is a very good tequila. So, so let me ask you just as we kind of wind down on the RBC here um, and head into news. You're watching on Sunday. Yep. Rory gets two, three strokes lead, somewhere in there, two or three stroke lead. But coming into 15, he's got a chance to close the door 
on 15 and make a birdie. He misses like a three footer. And then he goes and bogeys 16 and leads down to one. Yeah. Tell um, me. I mean, I know how I felt. R- Rory was in full choke mode. For sure, he was. And it like, was like my. So. I thought it was just going to be the curse of curse of me. Like I can't pick a winner. I can't get this guy right. Um, but I mean, he had JT and Finau chasing him. Right. And also, it's like Finau it's, missed a putt on one of those two holes that could have got him tied with JT and made it a little bit. And then he ended up making a tough one on on seventeen or eighteen that put a little more pressure on. But it was one of those things where, like. Nobody quite applied enough pressure, and then obviously 17 and 18, Roy birdie both of them. Right. Like, so, so after that bogey, I got worried. On 16, after that bogey, I was like, oh, yeah, but gosh I mean, darn it. He misses a three footer on, I mean, it was a three footer. Right. Just pulled. I mean, it was just an amateur pull. Like, we, we do it Done once it around. Time. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'd just go tap it in. Oh, hit the corner of the cup, hit it too hard. Now you got a three or four footer coming back, which, you know, get testy usually once, make yeah miss two in a row but like but they then, get testy in that in right. that situation and then he bogeys the next misses a about a five or six footer but never had it online either just looked putter just wasn't comfortable right but he kept sticking i mean he was sticking irons and from tough locations too like yeah. some of those some of those shots and there's highlights there some mm-hmm. of the shots that he had super, super tough locations. And, right. okay, I'm going to put it to five feet. I'm going to put it to four feet. I'm going to put... Well, and he made... I just, it was just shot after shot after shot. Right. It was the Rory that we used to mm-hmm. see when everybody's like, this is the best golfer we've seen in the last 10 years. Right. Or whatever. Well, because then he made two or three 30-footers, 40-footers in the round, um, you know, to get his round going. Yeah, because Finau, Finau made a huge putt. Yeah. Uh, probably a 25 footer, 30 right. footer. And then Rory makes a huge putt on that exact mm. same hole. And it's like, yeah, Fino, you got, you got to be pumped about it. What I thought was cool was like, I didn't realize how close Tony Fino and Rory yeah, were. I, I like Rory lived with them that. for a little bit. Yep. Uh, you know, they, that video from gosh, was it the junior amateur or something like that? Right. Well, they have, I mean, there were at least three or four different childhood Pictures at, I mean, somewhat the same age, but definitely within years of each other of them circulating. So, like, definitely from a golf perspective, lifelong golf friends. Oh, um, yeah. You know, we're talking 20 years. But, like, yeah, but I, I didn't really understand the dynamic until you see, like, Rory mm-hmm. and, and Finau's, like, talking. Oh, yeah, he he stayed with us for a while, mm-hmm. like in the States and everything like that, stayed right. with his family. And it's like, Oh, okay. These guys go way back. Yeah. Like this is, this is a lot closer than what we can right. imagine. So to have those guys kind of battling it out and duking it out at the highest level is, is always fun. Right. And I mean, I feel like JT's just pretty good buddies with, with anybody that's kind of in that group. I mean, obviously he's knowingly close to tiger and him and uh, Fowler and Spieth, uh, you know, we'll play, go on vacations together and stuff like that. But it seems like that group of that generation of golfers is, uh, is closer knit than, than most we see that. And that's, that's a good point because like Phil Poulter, um, you know, some of those older, you know, older now on tour guys, Mm -hmm. like we don't see that same kind of camaraderie as we do with these guys, the speech, the JTs, different stuff. I mean, even, even looking at it from like Ryder cup, and Correct. different stuff like that. When they're playing together, they're mm-hmm. just feeding off of each other, and you can tell that like that relationship's super, super close. Right. Yeah. I. Uh, I just. Yeah. The thing. Thing I took out of it from a top player perspective, you know, going into a major is Rory almost choked, but didn't. Meaning, he still had confidence to stuff it close, and he did that all tournament. Made some long putts here and there, but I mean, if you keep sticking it close, and you're that caliber of player you're not going to miss three, four, five putts no. in a row. So, like, no. he just kept putting it close. Therefore, like, he he made the putt on 18 and 
was just trying to make sure that he didn't hit it past the hole and it just happened to fall in type of thing. So he goes birdie, birdie, finish. But the birdie on 17 is really what takes the pressure of right. 18 away. So just the fact that he came off of two lackluster holes and put the nail in the coffin, so to say, you know, Finau's in good form. I mean, him and JT both shoot 64. JT, JT even, you know, scuttled a, lit down, a bit down the stretch there. You know, was bogey. I think he bogeyed 18 um, so that Finau finished alone in second. But, you know, JT's hitting the ball well. He's confident going into this week. He bogeyed 17 and 18. 17 and 18. So, I mean, really down the stretch, you know, sh- shoulda, coulda, woulda. And but still like, shot a 64. But yeah, right. I mean, he's right there. And Finau has turned a corner, it seems. Um, you know, still a little bit of the a putting woes here and there, um, especially late. But if he's striking the ball well, he's a top 10 guy, top 5 guy. JT, same thing. And Rory seems to be in great form right now as well. So, I'm gosh, I can't wait for this U.S. Open. No, um, I, I so. completely agree. I, there's a lot of guys peaking right around mm-hmm. the exact same time that right. it's fun for golf. Mm-hmm. It is fun for golf to see these guys just peak. Like, And it's right. fun for golf to see guys, okay, Justin Rose, for example. Yeah, he's maybe a little bit older, but he's like, he's playing. Right. Well, like, like you just mentioned, he shot a 60, mm-hmm. had a chance for a 58. He shoots that 58, he gets third. Mm-hmm. I mean, he... I don't know. I mean, after an opening 69, which was, a you know, a decent round, but nothing right. special. And then he goes 70, and he makes the cut. Mm-hmm. Then he goes 67 again, a really good, you know, a three under, a good, good round, and then all of a sudden 10 under. Right. And it's just like, holy smokes, where did this guy come from? Yeah. No, so I, I like it. I, I'm I'm pumped up for, for the U.S. Open just based off of, right. like, you, like we talked about, guys are peaking mm-hmm. at the same time. And then even the guys that took the week off are still really, really, really good. Right. Jumping to live? Jumping to live. All right. Initial Um, thoughts? Initial thoughts. I expected more, if that makes sense. Yeah. My initial thoughts were, so like, I mean, we were texting quite a bit back and forth. and Yeah. Like, I feel like we both had extremely high expectations, like not even necessarily Tuesday when we talked about it originally, but like Wednesday and Thursday, really diving into the yeah. research of it. It was like, oh my gosh, like there's so many moving parts, like this is exciting. And Thursday I was ready to to watch. I didn't get to watch as much as I would like to, but I got to watch enough that I, considering what they had, YouTube broadcast was the only thing they really had available um, they did a good job with the broadcast. They did a good oh, job yeah. with building everything up, but it ended up for me being a, uh, a strong curiosity that led into a little bit of a letdown. Yeah. I just, um, there was, unfortunately I was, I was right with you. And like you said, we talked a lot about this. I was right with you. There wasn't a lot of, questions answered what's the format true format how does this guy score what is this what is this what is this and for that reason I thought I thought maybe they opened this broadcast with kind of like a NFL countdown type deal where they're like oh this is the these are the rules this is the stipulations this, overview this, this. anything yeah and right? there was nothing and I thought I think if they do that in the future I think it gains more interest because just like we talked about, like hockey is very, very fun to watch, mm-hmm. but people don't understand it. Right. People don't get to watch their favorite player play for more than, you know, 45 right. seconds to a minute at a time in hockey. And they're like, well, what's, what's going on? Why are they changing lines so much? This, this, this don't understand hockey in that same sense. They don't necessarily understand all of live. Right. They want to be a fan because of some of the players and, and the money that's being thrown around. Like, Mm-hmm. Money talks, and when you see that kind of money being thrown around, it's like, oh, yeah, that 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 intrigues me. That piques my interest. But until I fully understand, it's hard to to get behind it. Well, right, and, you you know, money talks, you say that, and definitely these guys on tour, like, money does talk and has talked and is talking to them. 
but we did not lead with the fact that Charles Schwartzel, who won by two or three strokes, won the single largest event purse in golf history at $4.75 million, $4 million for winning the individual, and he, they split $3 million four ways for his team being the leading team, so another 750000 on top of that. And yet that's not the that that's not our lead. That doesn't nobody else really cared. And I think I had this discussion with a few different people over the weekend is once you get to a certain amount of money and any professional sport is going to qualify in this, um, people just don't really like a number's just a number. Like right. you become kind of numb to it, like, oh that guy makes a million dollars. Well, you could say that guy makes a hundred million. And it really like nobody feels bad for the guy that makes a million. So like, that's the thing is like all these PGA tour guys want to, you know, the guys on the low side are like, Oh, I spent $5,000 to travel and I had to go through security and leave my bag. And like kind of a woe is me, but more so like life is hectic. It's crazy on the road type of thing. Nobody feels sorry for them. But also nobody feels sorry for JT who carried away, I don't know, a million bucks this weekend, somewhere in there probably for winning. I don't know what the RBC purse was. Um, I think Rory won like 1.5. Yeah, Rory won 1.5. Um, but, or J, you know, JT finishes third and wins 500,000, 700,000. Yeah, I think 900 was right, for like, second. Like whatever, and so Finau gets 900 for second. And it's like, I don't... Just because Schwartzel won four point seven five doesn't like doesn't mean that like you feel bad for the guys that win a million. No, and like so, therefore, like the excitement of the event, the fact that there was competition in that PGA event, and it felt like the Live Tour was an exhibition. Yeah, that makes um, sense. That even makes though, sense. yes, they're playing for money, but they're playing for money that. Dustin Johnson already got 125 million. Yep. Phil Mickelson already got 200 million. They're not playing for anything. Bryson Bryson DeChambeau got 100 million from Liv and his career winnings on the tour is like 25 or right. something like that. So like they're not play, like playing for a purse like no. And then the team event is like that's the most intriguing part to me. There's no information on it. Comes come to find out some of the teams were preset. Like, the team that won it was, I believe, the South African team. That's Schwartzel and Ustazen and whoever Grace else was and yeah. Duplessis. And they won by, like, 20 strokes, 18 strokes, something. Well, they ridiculous. finished one, two, three. Yeah, something ridiculous. But that team was preset, so they didn't even draft that team. And so there's some stipulations within the contract. Now we're going to get, you know, call it eight new dudes out of 48 into a team. So they're just going to be placed on one of the already existing teams. But... Yeah, it's like there's like confusion. Said, I, I'm not even going to try to break it down because I don't know. I don't know that. I'm just saying that, like, to your point, that should be the like that should be what they're, they're leading with. Like, right? Give me somebody to root for. Like, if you really want these teams to matter, then like, give me the breakdown of the Ironheads or the Crushers or whoever that you know. Whatever no, the I can. Teams I are. completely like, agree. And I don't. You're giving I, me nothing to root for because I don't even know who's on the team or what they're trying to do. And I, I don't even care that it was a preset team for the draft. This, this, this. I don't even care about that. Right. What I, what I care more about is okay. These guys, these guys won by twenty strokes or whatever it is. Now, how does that lead into the team event later on? It, it, is it by strokes gained against the other teams? Is that how they seed it out? You know, is it by number of you know wins or number of top tens from each each player? I I don't I don't know, but that's stuff that I want to know. That's right. stuff that I just want them to sit down and just say, "Hey, this is it." But then we're still talking about it, so the mystery is still there, right? And I don't know. Maybe that's their their right stance on it. Let's let's leave it mysterious. Yeah, let's and leave some of these, these guys asking are, questions. They're still getting protected. I mean, the next, I mean, they play in Portland into the month, and you've got DeChambeau that'll be there. Reed that'll be there. Um, rumors of Matthew Wolf not confirmed. So not confirmed, but I could see it. Like Matthew Wolf. 
Bubba Watson rumors. Matthew Wolf. So we talked about it. He came out like when we had a big talk about mental health and different stuff like that. Um, always important topic, but he came out and just like, I'm just starting to have fun Fun again. again. Right. And I think for that guy, if he just has a paycheck and he can Mm -hmm. just play golf, right. Then it just takes a lot because when he's good, he is good. He's elite. He is good. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fun because he's got the weird swing that everybody talks about it every single time. He comes up, sets his hands way high, comes Mm -hmm. down hard. But the dude hits the ball a long way. He can be very, very precise. He can make shots happen. He's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. But then when he's not on, he is bad. Very bad. Mm -hmm. Loses a lot of golf balls. Yeah. Uh, I mean... I just so I yeah, much more to come on live. Uh, I de- I definitely think uh, definitely going to be interesting um, as we get into U.S. Open talk. How the fans interact. The media has already proven to be extremely harsh on these live guys Hate in their em. interviews. Hate them, um, and the live protected them. They removed media members that probably didn't deserve to get re- be removed uh, for some questions. And the U.S. Open was like, yeah, you guys can play, but. We're not protecting you. Uh, You're going to take questions, and you're going to take all the questions, even if they're dumb, hateful, direct. Like, you know, it doesn't mean that we agree with all the questions. It's just they're not going to get pampered by the majors about the live tour. And to a point, it's getting to kind of, you know, beating a dead horse with some of these questions. Yep. But, uh, I mean, they knew it was coming. Right. So I I agree with it. I mean – you guys made your hole. You you dug your own your own grave mm-hmm. per se, I guess, if you want to call it that. You guys you guys made this decision by going over there and playing. Mm-hmm. We don't have we don't owe you anything. Mm-hmm. We don't owe you anything to protect you from these guys just because right. you don't want your feelings hurt. Mm-hmm. So, and then uh, I said last thing I had a note on here is as far as those were concerned is our conversation on you know Matthew Wolf playing bad golf. So I, I don't have the name in front of me, but the, the guy who finished dead last in the live tour this week, um, I believe finished plus 24 uh, through th- three rounds of golf. Uh, no cut, remember, in, in live golf. And so Andy Ogletree. Andy Ogletree finished plus 24, and he won $120,000. Yep. Because he showed up and played 54 holes of golf really bad. And his team did not use any of his scores, meaning he wasn't in the top two scores of this four players on day one or two, and he wasn't in the top three on day four. And they finished a shot, I believe, outside of third place, which means he almost won money in the team event by not taking any of his scores and showing up to play 54 holes, which we talked about, um, you know, potential of winning – a lot of money in playing the worst golf, and and he was on the cusp, on the cusp uh, of week one, winning an extra hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, right? Just to play golf, right? I, um, I think, I don't want to one hundred percent say this. Um, I don't think I can say this. I wanted to say that I think I could go out and shoot plus twenty four. I don't know that I could say that. No, I, I I'm no. not going to. No, you can't. Se- Seventy five is. I good. wouldn't say that. You, I think you could. Sh- not on, I, I think mean, not on close. the golf courses they're playing. I think you'd be close. I mean, if I played three good rounds of golf, I would hope that I would be in that realm. Which I mean, that that by itself says like that tells you how bad he played, right? But but also that he won one hundred twenty thousand. Yes, that that shows how bad he played, but also shows how good these golfers are. Like, how, how high did you have to place this week on the tour to make one hundred twenty thousand? Uh, let me pull up. This will actually be a good, because good I'll pull up our, uh, our standings because that's why, I mean, it was the point last week. It's the point this week. It's like, that's why these guys are going to this tour. So 160,000, uh, was 13th. Right. So you had to finish top 15. Yeah. 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 Uh, we don't have anybody that finished in like 15, 14, right, 15, right. 16, but, but I mean, Roughly speaking, 
maybe even call it top twenty. I mean, top twenty probably didn't make. That so much, here, here's here's a here's a prime example. Uh, Cam Smith finished forty eighth. Yep. These guy that that guy was forty eighth. Right? Oh, there you go, perfect. Cam Smith twenty two thousand five hundred sixty eight dollars. Right, so hundred hundred thousand more. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars more money to finish forty eighth and right. live. Mm-hmm. So that's why you guys. Here's my thing, and here's the next step for live is. Andy Ogletree is very likely to be a guy replaced by Patrick Reed, by yep. Bryson. But so where do those guys go? Probably DP World Tour, maybe back to – I don't know if the Corn Ferry is part of the PGA, so I don't think they can go back to Corn Ferry based on the PGA suspension from what I understand. Um, so they're going to be limited in their options um, from that perspective. But, again, a lot still to come on live – um, a lot of fan interaction, interesting things to go on, uh, which we'll get into kind of with our U.S. Open breakdown this weekend on how fans interact. Um, he is with, a Corn Ferry guy. So I don't think he can go back to the Corn Ferry, though. He actually won the 2009. Like, I've heard his name before. He won the 2019 U.S. Amateur. Okay. So, like, I've heard of the guy, but, like, now he can't go back to any of that. So, But he's $120,000 richer. So what do we know? Um, quick notes. There were two other events, um, notable golf events this week, um, unique to golf in general. Um, one was a DP world tour mixed event put on by Henrik Stenson and Annika Sorsam. Um, so it was the DP world tour men played from their tees, women played from their normal tees and the scores just were the scores. I'm going to completely block the name out of my mind of the woman who won it, but she won by nine strokes, uh, ran away from the field, and beat the closest, the second closest woman by like 15 to 18 strokes or something like that. Lynn Grant. Yes. Dominated the field. 24 under to 15 under. Henrik Stenson was 15 under. Yeah. Um, Just absolutely walked through the field. Uh, didn't really see too much of it. Saw actually like the last couple of holes that she played. And that's kind of how I knew about the event just as I was flipping through on Sunday, but, um, a really cool idea. Uh, definitely something that I feel like would be very easy to do. Um, mixing those fields. I mean, you're just setting two different tee boxes, pin placements don't need to be any different. Um, you know, just trying to find those distances and stuff like that on certain holes, um, where you don't give one group too big of an advantage over the other, but you know, overall, a, a very intriguing concept that uh, that I came across. I'm trying to go back and find. So I'm literally clicking through. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as I know, it's kind of the first of its kind from like an official right. event. I'm clicking through to see how. <clears throat> so currently right now. The first person that I found first, the next female mm-hmm. was 10 under. So she beat the next female by 14 strokes. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. I knew it was double digits. I don't remember exactly what it yeah. was. So it wasn't like the women's course was set up, you know, because people are like, oh, she's a girl. You know, she's playing from a women's season. It's like, yeah, so were all the other women who finished 14 strokes behind her. I mean, she 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 went so, eight under on on the last day. Yeah. But, I mean, she, I mean, she shot 24 under for the week. So, <laughs> like, I that's. Mean, just had a day. And so like, congratulations to her. That's an awesome thing, especially in a, in a, one of the, you know, unique events. Other event that I saw that was going on was the Curtis cup, which is basically the women's college version of the Ryder cup. Um, so it's U S women versus Irish and British women. Okay. Um, the, and they're, these are amateur college athletes. Um, the issue that it sounds like they're starting to run into is the U S has dominated this event for the last handful of times by dozens of strokes. Uh, they won by like, they won 15 and a half to three and a half this year. And so the talk is just that they're going to internationally need to start, you know, kind of like the Ryder cup has become all of Europe. And then the president's cup has become the rest. Like the Curtis cup is going to need to become, all, All of Europe, Europe or of yeah, yeah. Cause they have the Solheim cup now. Um, but the Curtis cup, the Solheim cup is for professionals. This is for college. So yeah. they're going to just, basically they're just going to need U S versus the world instead of U S versus two other countries. It's a very old event. So it's tough to change tradition, but you've got so many golf, so many more golfers to pick from in the U S now, especially being a, a, a U S dominant sport 
So I, I they, mean, they're probably going to make some changes on that in the years to come. But yeah, two, uh, just two events of note um, that were female dominated events that are were also going on this week. So. Yeah, fifteen and a half to four and a half, I think, is what what, what it, the final was. But like this, yes, it's the third year in the in a row that the Americans have won it, mm-hmm. and the Americans, it looks like they lead the series thirty one eight to three. Yeah, I mean, it's just something. It's time to. Add in a little more competitive. So, yeah. Because if you want to get the, I mean, ultimately the point is to get the attention of viewers to get, and the only way to right. do that is competitive. And got to make it more competitive. It, I completely agree. And I think some of the names are starting to, like, I never really watched a lot of women's golf. And then Roseanne came out and she's just, she dominated. Unreal. Yeah. Like, that would be a name that I would expect to see at the top of that DP World Tour tournament right. that you were talking about. Like, but she just, she, she killed was, everybody. She weekend. was on the U.S. Curtis Cup team. Yeah, exactly. That's, she dominated she, that She team. went undefeated, didn't didn't yep. lose a match. Like, mm-hmm. she was, she, it said, word for word, she routed yeah. the women's British amateur right. or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just It was, it was, good. A, I mean, she shot, I think they, she won like seven and six. So, they were done after hole 13 and just bow raced the girl. Like, Poured in birdie after birdie, on, and that's on top of her. that's like, a British amateur champion. Like yeah, that's not <laughs> no. Like the other girl was playing like decently solid golf. Like it, it was just you could just see she just basically took the ripped her soul out <laughs> here. It's like the Mortal Kombat yeah. finishing move. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's <laughs> you're not wrong. What it felt you're like not. When I was that's watching that's the highlights. awesome. So that's yeah. a, that's a great analogy there because it's so true. But that's what she kind of did all year. Mm-hmm. Like she just. One of there's there's like videos out there of I think they're on the range just like talking to one of our teammates. I can't remember which one of our teammates because I think this teammate's actually really freaking good too. Stanford women's well, they golf won is the just national like incredible team and she and Rosang won the exactly individual they're race, just incredible. So, yeah, very good but they uh, they were playing and I can't even remember what it was. They were just on the range and they were just talking about how unreal she is, mm-hmm. and it's like. It's an it factor. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, it, and again, just like I said, I didn't watch a ton and I probably don't watch as much as for loving golf as much as I do. I probably don't watch as much as the next person, but I don't know. It's it's fun to see some of those names. It's fun to see those events. It's fun to see those things get bigger. So then right. there is more attention there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Bryson. Has has his team come out and said that he's officially playing in the D, in the live mm-hmm. golf tour? So and his he's team announced. Did. Okay, and he's signed, and like they spun it, which I find extremely amusing, as like Bryson being unique and like thinking next level, and it's like okay, if that was the thing, then like why didn't you jump on board when like Kevin Na jumped on board? Yeah, like, like, why weren't you on board with Phil? Right, and like, and all the rumors had him pegged as being on board. Then, so like, possibly he was. He got off, and then he got back on. But well, the reason I asked is just because I can't remember what tournament it was. It was a tournament early, and mm-hmm. he made the comment like, "Unless my team or I say something, it's no, not they've, true." They've announced, like that, yeah. that, 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 him that. and Reed have both officially like they've made Facebook or not Facebook. Twitter uh, posts. Twitter posts where it's a picture of them with their signature. I'm coming to the basically. Yeah. I mean, those yeah. are those are guys though, like I hate to say it, but nobody's really gonna miss Patrick Reed on tour. No, I mean he's gonna embrace. I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the US Open talk, but like he's going to embrace the the villain role. And I I don't know if Bryson can. Just from what like him and Kepka went through, like I yeah. wouldn't say. I mean, I don't think either one of those golfers have been. I mean, just look at where they've gone since it's happened. It's like neither one of them has really benefited from that. No, other than they got their whatever. They probably got their likes up on Twitter, and so they got more, maybe some more consideration for the. The pip, the pip money, yeah, the PGA, that they're never gonna is, win, right? So, 
I don't know. Therefore, I don't know. Yeah, I just I think. I mean, you mentioned it best. Like, the, neither one of those guys benefited from that. Neither one of those guys is playing great since then. Mm-hmm. Brooks better than Bryson. Bryson hasn't even hardly played since then, so we can't even say uh, yeah, that. Like, I don't even know where he's going to be at. Right. Who knows if he's even going to play in this Portland live event? Yeah. I mean, I think he will. He, yeah. I, I mean, I agree, but he's just he's just Paul Casey everybody at this point. <laughs> Don't mention that name. It's well, a name yeah. never even mentioned here again. Okay, fair. Fair enough. Uh, any other news that you can think of? I mean, we have outside. a little bit of NFL news. but I, I really don't want to give it the press, but, I mean, it's already out there. We had two receivers um, who have moved on from elite quarterbacks to much lesser quarterbacks who have – have said stuff, um, some misleading by the media as far as how the headlines are written, and some just over exaggerated by the players. So, kind of a combination. Tyree Kill um, basically came out and said that when it comes to accuracy, he'll take Tua. And um, Devontae Adams came out and said that, you know, Derek Carr had all the same skill sets as uh, Aaron Rodgers. So. Here's the thing, is that if you put Tyreek Hill on a field and throw him slant routes and curls and timing comebacks and stuff like that, and you put Tua out there with nobody rushing him, because he's never played a game with Tua. He's probably going to put the ball right on your numbers. Tua's probably pretty accurate. Mahomes is not a guy, when you say accuracy, that I'm like, Give me the top five accuracy guys of the last three years. I'm not putting my home, my homes in my top five. I'm not putting no. Josh Allen in my top five. I'm not putting Lamar Jackson in my top five. Like I'm putting Alex Smith in my top five. You know, like when he was playing. Like accuracy is one dimension of, and so like when right. he says that, there's an overreaction of, oh, he said that two is better than Mahomes, and like that's not what he said. Now, the way that he said it. Yeah, he's taking a shot at Mahomes. I get it. Mahomes makes throws that no one else in the league, in the universe, makes because of some of the arm angles and situations he puts himself in. He's not a pocket passer, per se. Whereas Tua is going to be a pocket passer accurate on time, or he's not going to be successful. Right. Um, and that's just, I mean, just nature of the beast. So, like, from a quarterbacking perspective – Understand what Tyree Tyreek Hill is saying. Don't over, don't blow it up. Like this is what it is. If you put Tua and Mahomes on a field in an accuracy contest, could Tua beat Mahomes? I wouldn't. You know, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Uh, Devontae Adams, the whole everything that Devontae Adams said about Derek Carr, he prefaced with some type of praise or compliment of Aaron Rodgers and then he went into why Derek Carr is like that and it was from film study it was from what he sees on certain routes it was from what he sees on certain coverages what he sees post snaps pre-snap you know what he's seeing as far as off-season work you know those types of things and then he would be like you know Derek can do that or Derek can do this or and it's like okay like again you haven't played with him you haven't played a live snap and has Carr shown to be he has Right? Just not in the NFL. Well, true. True. They played, I mean, they're bros. Right. But, they're but college that, bros. That's why with Adam saying that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but I mean, what, I mean, if that's the case, then like, it's not like he was going to say it while he was on the Packers. Right. But, but with Adam saying that kind of stuff about Carr, mm-hmm. for me, gives it a little bit more credibility just because he has played with him. He has had that real right. life, real life stuff. And again, he's not saying anything really bad about, Aaron Rodgers whatsoever, who's just saying, who, me personally, I think Derek Carr's a good quarterback. I just think. You can't put him in the same breath as Aaron Rodgers from a. No. And, like, that's not even, I mean, based on who Derek Carr's played with is one of the reasons why you can't. So, I mean, the guy's played some really damn good football for the Raiders. Yeah. Like. Oh, I completely agree. I think. I think that's, that's another good thing, like. 
that's another thing. Yeah. Less less Matthew Stafford esque, but kind of like a Matthew Stafford Same. situation. Like yeah. Matthew Stafford played the youngest to thirty, mm-hmm. young thirty thousand, youngest to forty thousand, youngest to fifty thousand yards with the Lions, mm-hmm. and then he goes and wins a Super Bowl his first year out with right. the Rams. Like that just goes to show you that these guys are elite. They are just not on a team that's elite around them. Right. And when Matthew, the Rams were an elite team, mm-hmm. top to bottom, all around him, mm-hmm. f- from coaching yeah. to their long snapper, you know, everything right. about them was great. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's why, I mean, like I said, it was news. Um, there was a lot of overreaction to it. I don't think anything that the receivers said. Was I mean Tyreek's more of a prima donna than right. Than I mean it's Devontae more how, Adams anyway. So how Tyreek said what he was saying, the Devonta Adams thing was just more of you know if you didn't take the first part of what he said and you only listened to the second, you're like He's okay, bashful. like and so again mostly overreaction stuff from the media, which I mean that's what they get paid to do. But overall, to me, I didn't really it was it was news ish, but I w- it wasn't breaking news by any means. I agree. It's time.